Next up, we're going to have Kevin Lee with uh, Playdate. Uh, Kevin, come on in. Over to you. That's right. Thanks. Uh, so at Playdate, we're building out uh, a better way for uh, pets to interact with their, their owners and vice versa. Um, it might be surprising to you, but there's actually 160 million cats and dogs in the U.S. alone. Um, and what's pretty crazy is despite the latest tech advancements, we still interact with them with a nylon leash and a tennis ball. That just shouldn't be the case. So with Playdate, this is our first product. Uh, if you guys want to see it, it's a camera-enabled smart ball uh, that pet owners can interact with their dogs and cats with. So you can control it from our mobile app from anywhere in the world. It's got a camera inside, it's stabilized, and so you can see a live HD video feed in real time. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's a brief video clip. This video seems a little choppy. It's actually much smoother <laughs> in practice. Um, so our story actually started back in 2013 uh, when I fostered this guy, Hulk, which meant I ended up adopting him. Uh, and so uh, I have this tendency to obsess. And so I got really into canine cognition, dog psychology, things like that. Um, and at the time, I was a researcher at AT&T Labs. So uh, I was working on new types of devices. I have 36 patents in the device space, uh, and I'm an adjunct professor at Columbia where I teach a class on the subject. Uh, so with that in mind, I thought, surely what we need here is an activity tracker. It's the only way he's going to grow up well-adjusted. Uh, and so I built one, <laughs> slapped it on his collar for our walks around the city. Um, it was just a hobby project. I didn't think anything of it. Fast forward to last year, uh, I talked to a buddy of mine from college about commercializing it. Uh, and so we started talking to folks in the city, dog owners. But the feedback we got was dog owners didn't need another activity tracker. Their biggest problem was just they felt guilty leaving their pets home alone all day. Uh, and so that's kind of how Playdate was born. Um, and so we seem to have, we seem to have tapped into to some real problem here. Uh, we've raised over 600000 uh, on Indiegogo. Uh, making us by far the highest grossing pet tech crowdfund to date. Um, but just to take a step back, but just to take a step back, um, the, the key insight here is that you've got all this tech out there, right? You know, you've got Uber, you've got Seamless, you can get anything delivered in a day, you can FaceTime your relatives across the world. Uh, but when it comes to our pets, Somehow they've been left behind. And at the same time, the problems that pets and pet owners have, that hasn't changed in 100 years. Uh, and so with Playdate, we're looking to bridge that gap, bring the latest technology into the pet space, solve some real problems that pet owners actually have. Sapta. Um, so I think this is a really interesting concept. Um, I, you know, I was looking at um, some of the things that you had on your Indiegogo campaign mm -hmm. and uh, some of the things you can do with this that you didn't really mention, like the speaker and the sound and the mm -hmm. microphone. It sounds amazing. Um, this is a really interesting market, this pet market. Um, there are a lot of startups looking to, to sell into dog owners and cat owners. Um, and, and you're right, so many of them are about activity tracking and mood tracking. Uh, but this is a very unique concept, so I think uh, it's, it certainly feels very differentiated. Where are you now, since these were pre-orders, where are you now in the process of, of launching? So right now we've gone through a few iterations of what's called engineering verification test, which basically means we've made a small number of our custom design um, and have tested it and have iterated on it. So we're about to go into what's called design verification testing, which means we work with the contract manufacturer on making low volume uh, builds to essentially get the tweaks out of the mass manufacturing process. We've already identified our uh, electronics manufacturer as well as our plastics, um, and so Right now, it's just a matter of getting those tweaks down before you engage in tooling, and you know we start cranking out 5,000 of these. So when do you expect to launch these into the market? So right now, we've been telling folks that we'll be shipping in March. Um, we believe this to be sort of a conservative overestimate. We actually plan to ship a little bit before then. Um, and so you should be seeing these in uh, a number of retailers that we've been onboarding with uh, early, sorry, early Q2, maybe late Q1. Awesome. Um, Great demo. You can tell you've done this before and you've been Thanks. around the block, right? <laughs> you, you gave a, a fantastic vision, good demo. The background story was very personal. Uh, the history of patents uh, gives us confidence in being able to deliver on the promise. Um, and so I'm curious, as, as you pose the question to us, 
In terms of scaling, you know, direct sales, um, Indie Indiegogo gives you a great bit of validation for mm -hmm. consumer demand and also a potential community of evangelists. If you make them happy, they're going to help spread the word. Um, or going brick and mortar. Um, I guess two thoughts came to mind there. Um, one is traction in direct sales and building that community of evangelists gives you better leverage negotiating terms with brick and mortar. So it seems like you have gone that route and it's kind of going to be a good thing in that case. Um, the other thought was there may be a middle ground in terms of all of the existing communities online of pet owners and pet aficionados and dog walkers that's not quite as difficult as negotiating with a brick and mortar, but gives you a little bit more bang for your buck where you make one relationship there and it's with a whole community. And so that was kind of my thought around, I think going direct sales to consumers is great uh, to give you better leverage with brick and mortar, but in between those two, there could be a middle ground of kind of existing communities of pug owners or there may even be Facebook groups for people who are feeling guilty at work, not able to play with their dogs. No, that's very true. That's, a, um, that's actually some feedback that I've received about um, good ways to find uh, the right kinds of influencers to sort of tap into influencer marketing, things like that, which is very powerful in the pet space. Yeah. Well, it also seems like if, you know, if you're going to be in full production by kind of Q2 and ready to go to retail, that is the perfect time to go to the gift shows and things like that because this, to me, is very much a gift Q4 business. You know, at um, even like at a Bed Bath and Beyond, for example, that doesn't do a tremendous amount in pets, but certainly during the holidays they do, right? Yeah. Um, so it kind of expands from just your sort of pet stores into a into a larger retail universe. That's true. Actually, most of the retailers that we're onboarding with right now are not actually exclusively pet. Um, mm -hmm. focused. Um, and the insight there is just based on marketing we've done, folks aren't going into a pet store and then, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to buy like this, uh, you know, incredible product to interact with my pet remotely. Instead, it's, it's more of an electronics play. Mm -hmm. I love just the the market development that Nest has done for you in terms of yeah. your children. It's so easy to kind of take that mental construct and bring it here in something that's much more engaging. I also have a feeling the the, the Employers of America may take you know, <laughs> as, as they're, they're blocking Facebook, but their people will be in the back on their phones because this could be highly addictive. No, um, but you're absolutely right. We're very lucky that we sort of tapped into some tailwinds yeah. um, mm -hmm. that seem to be going very strong right now. Consumers are much more hardware friendly these days. Sapna, what's given your experience in retail? How do you tell the story of this in just an end cap? Yeah, so this is actually a harder story to tell in store, but there are certainly, you know, for new products like this, the things that have seen that I've seen that have worked really well have been kind of in store demos, have been in store videos on those little teeny tiny <laughs> um, TVs, um, and kind of training of in store associates to to, you know, kind of be out there and, and showing it to people. It is a little harder, which is why the having even on the packaging, having kind of the mm -hmm. link to like, you know see a demo of this right now on your phone um, is very helpful. You know, things like that to kind of get people engaged a little bit more in store. Yeah, so that's that's a great point. Um, one of the distributors that we've been talking to, they actually have a network of sort of smaller pet stores where they have a TV that, and they're willing to play a video mm -hmm. that showcases the demo. Um, so that's like shelf space. Exactly, yeah. I was going to say, I'm curious about... Um, on the phone, I imagine you have some sort of native app to help you drive That's it. right. Yep. Uh, and I imagine social media hooks, you know, who doesn't love a cat or a dog video? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of finding those early influencer adopters and giving them tools um, to even using the previous product, Mad Hat, you know, make these videos go viral. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could be a huge kind of way to get into definitely. people's hearts definitely. and minds. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, that's, I, I, I guess the software side of things is something we've spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, it's not something you guys brought up, but it, it's a question I often get, which is, you know, uh, this is a great product and it seems like you're solving a real problem, but, but you know, what about the software? What about the recurring revenue? Um, and so one of the great things about Indiegogo and just general crowdfunding is, like I think you mentioned, um, we end up with these highly engaged customers. Yeah. So. I just asked them, what kind of software services do you want to see on this? Uh, and in that email survey, the open rate was over 73%, which wow. is incredibly high for any wow. kind of email marketing campaign. Um, 
and some of the some of the the services entail the type of things you would expect sort of the ability to share photos and video with my social network you know so that I can I can share these cute moments that honestly people are plugging into Facebook and Instagram anyways yeah. mm -hmm. what's the uh, now the hardware side what, what's the technology inside this what all does it what all can it do uh, so it's actually quite a bit more advanced than it looks like uh, mm -hmm. I, it's it's one of those it's one of those products where I think because it it's so engaging and it's quite straightforward to use, sort of belies the actual tech inside. Um, from a from a tech standpoint, the contents are very similar to actually what you find in a low-end tablet uh, without the display. Um, so that opens a lot of possibility for where we might take this as a future platform. Um, but uh, basically processor, memory, there's two motors in there that are individually controlled, uh, Wi-Fi that connects to uh, your home network and then to our servers. We then apply some of our um, video stabilization magic uh, before sending it off to the app. Um, and then it charges wirelessly via Cradle. And the retail like, price will likely be what? Well, right now we're um, publicly stating $249. Um, we believe we can bring that up, bring that down with volume. Um, which will allow us to sell quite a few more units. And investment structure, stress status? Uh, so we've, we've in the past, so we actually pivoted and this was something completely different. Uh, we were making a newsreader app, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which turns oh, out well to be a for, tough uh, market yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you could call that a pivot. That just might be a, <laughs> a, a start over. Business, a whole yeah. different business. Yeah. Um, and so we did a small friends and family round, went through an accelerator here in New York, Entrepreneur Roundtable Accelerator. They're just right down the street. Um, and right now we're doing a, a round to essentially raise to build some of the back end as well as build out our product roadmap. We have a few different ideas. Um, equally, I would say, differentiated from what else is out there, but focused on the core company vision of uh, solving real pet problems that people actually have and have always had and seem, for whatever reason, to remain unsolved. I was just going to add one more thing. You know, uh, you mentioned the kind of 249 price, mm -hmm. you know, which strikes me as quite high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's sort of a big chunk of change yeah. for what is essentially a pet toy. And, and I mean, it's an engagement and there's mm -hmm. a lot of that. Um, but I wonder if there is something else you can do to kind of take the hardware to be more of the loss leader and those software services to really make up for it on the back end, which I think might be more palatable mm -hmm. to consumers than to shell out 249 plus tax. It's just, you know, you're getting into that I could buy a phone, actually, you know, for that kind of money, or or a chat, you know, a tablet. So, um, I would just encourage you to think about kind of the revenue model on that side. Yeah, no, that's good feedback. Uh, that's actually something we've been debating. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it for um, another product that we have on our roadmap that's going to be geared a little more towards what I would say the lower end of the pet tech market, um, much lower entry point for in terms of cost that we do make up for with recurring revenue streams. Have you had people come to this and see uses other than pets? Yeah, so the most interesting thing that happened is um, home security. So well, that's where I was at. Yeah, so yeah. during the crowdfunding campaign, one guy messaged me, um, the first one, I should say, uh, messaged me and said, I don't even have a cat or a dog. I'm buying this to use it as a home security monitor. And I thought, OK, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but then I started getting more and more of these messages. Uh, and so we included it in the survey when we sent it out to folks to see you know, what do people actually want in um, the software services that we build on top. And it came back resoundingly popular. Tons of people like the idea of using this to detect sort of non-pet, non-homeowner non people that are coming into our home. Um, and we have the computer vision and background to, to build it, so uh, why not? I also wonder about human games around this. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, in terms of person to person, yeah. or like the kids playing with the dog on a long road trip. No, I mean, I mean person to person. I almost mean that the fact that this has 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 movement as as an aim. I mean, if we played, I'm not going to worry. We played <laughs> catch with this now, and you could add in the fact that someone else can manipulate uh, the degree of difficulty of doing that <laughs> because of the motion <laughs> uh, and or soccer or whatever, and the the photo video piece. It just, I, 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 the great thing about these things is, is, is you let them out in the market and see how people use them. Mm -hmm. You may not be a pet company in the long run. Have I don't you know. Have Super Monkey Ball? Uh, I ha oh, I have, yeah. So like, I can yeah, see yeah, yeah. my son or myself um, <laughs> setting up an obstacle course in the house <laughs> and playing Absolutely. against each other to right, that exactly. point. No, that's, Absolutely. that's a great point. That's not something we had thought about. Um, I'll ask our backers what they think. Good. Yeah. How big is your team? 
Uh, so I, it's pretty small right now. Um, so it's my co-founder. He's a buddy of mine from college. Uh, we have a full-time marketer. Uh, and right now, we've been outsourcing some of the lower-end board design and mm -hmm. firmware development. And in terms of supply chain to hit your March deadline, are mm -hmm. you um, uh, working with firms here in the U.S. or in China? So the PCBA firm uh, is a U.S. company. Um, we're going to do the design verification test uh, in California, and then we'll be they have a factory in the outskirts of Shenzhen in China. Um, the Plastics is a Taiwan company. Their factory is also in China. And you're doing other things in the pet space? Uh, we are, yes. Yeah. So we already we yeah. have the next two products on our roadmap laid out. You want to see what they are? Um, I, one is to help with training, and the other is to help with uh, cognitive, cognitive aspects. So this, we sort of stumbled upon this. Um, in early tests with this particular uh, prototype, uh, what I saw is my dog and some other dogs, they get very excited and they start jumping around, they're barking at it. And I was worried that we were stressing out dogs. Um, and I'm lucky enough to share an alma mater with one of the foremost canine cognition experts. Uh, and so I just talked to her, I said, hey, you know, what do you think is happening? Should I be worried? Um, but she, she posited that because the ball moves around on its own, for the dogs and cats, it might just be a more natural way to play. You know, they think they're chasing a rabbit or a squirrel, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that got us thinking about um, products in that space. Uh, Kevin, obviously you've engaged us. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is great and a lot of fun, and uh, we'll be playing with this later. Cool. Well, thank <laughs> Thanks you. for thank having us. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Take care.